Why in the world does my best-selling listing earn a C grade in Marmalade? Why in the name of everything handmade does my listing that has never sold at all earn an A in Marmalade? If you've ever asked yourself these questions, then stick around, because this episode of The Jam is just for you. Lisa. I'm Jade. I'm Gordon. I'm Richie, and this is The Jam with Team Marmalade. So what is Marmalade? Is it a set of tools? Is it a resource? Is it education? Yes. Yes, it is. It's all of those. Marmalade helps you grow your sales with real shopper keywords. We use machine learning to take the guesswork out of getting found on Etsy. So if you have an Etsy shop and you want your listings to be found first by shoppers, you want them to show up in the right places where shoppers have an opportunity to buy them, then you want Marmalade. You want the keywords we have and you want the education and the community around Marmalade to help you get there. Now you can check out Marmalade at Marmalade.com and that is M-A-R-M-A-L-E-A-D.com. See you there. What are we talking about today? We're talking about what our grades mean or what your grades mean. Um, and we're going to jump into that by uh, actually just breaking grades down and talking through some definitions real quick. So who wants to start with that first one there? Sure, I'll talk about that. Grades, always a fun topic. Um, <laughs> so what factors go into your grades? When you go into your listing details inside of Marmalade, there's a whole bunch of stuff in there. Uh, and not all of those numbers on that page actually reflect up into your grade. It's just the stuff at the top uh, that goes into your grade. The stuff down at the bottom is helpful uh, still if you're, you know, you're trying to hone the, the sales ability of a certain listing and really tweak your descriptions and make sure your title looks good on mobile and stuff like that. But those components down at the bottom are, are more towards just helping out the listing. It's not part of your actual letter grade that you're seeing inside of Marmalade. So things that go into your letter grade, whether or not you're using all of your tags, the number of long tail focus keywords that you have, and we'll probably break that down in a minute here because that's kind of a mouthful. The focus keyword engagement, um, again, we'll kind of break that down and explain what we mean by focus keywords, but you know, the engagement there is part of your grade and how many of your tags that you have are long tail keywords. That also um, is a factor in the grade that you see inside of Marmalade. And they're not all even either. We kind of weigh these things by what we're seeing in the Etsy landscape. Etsy tells us these are the things that are important and that's why they're part of your grade. But as we see things kind of shift and move around, those weights uh, will adjust and they're not all even. So the number of tags that you're using in your listing doesn't count for the same amount necessarily as how many of those tags are long tails. Yes, and to reiterate what Gordon is saying there, when he says what goes into your grades are at the top, to be even more specific, the only factors that affect your grade are in the SEO factors box on that listing details page. So the SEO factors box, those are what go into and affect that grade that you're seeing on your main listings page or for each different listing. So don't go like change your description length and think it's going to affect your grade. 100% or sentiment or anything in sales factors. You know, a lot of times we have people write in and say, I know that I only have six photos on this listing and so I'll add those and that'll bump up my grade a little bit, but what else is wrong? Nope, those photos and however many of them you have or don't have, that isn't going to affect your grade. Again, the pieces that affect your grade, you'll see in that uh, SEO factors box on the listing details page. So we can work on breaking some of these little factors for you. So first, let me start with tags used. So you get 13 opportunities inside of each listing or for tags, 13 tag opportunities. You want to make sure that you're using all 13 of those because that's 13 opportunities to get in front of 13 different audiences, right? Uh, of course, we want you to be in front of as many different people as you can be who are interested in your product. So not, you know, using 12 out of 13, using 11 out of 13, you're, you're intentionally giving up the possibility to be in front of, you know, two or three more audiences or however many you don't have. So use all 13 of those tag opportunities because those are just opportunities for you to get in front of potential buyers. Anybody want to talk about long tail focus keywords? Sure. So when we say focus keywords, what we mean by focus keywords are keywords that exist in both your tags and your titles. Yes. And it can be a combination of two tags. So if, if you have a keyword that's in your title that's really long and it doesn't fit inside of a tag and you have two separate tags, as long as it's covered, right? And, and the things 
match character for character between your title and your tags. That is a focus keyword. And the importance of that is because when you do that, when you put a keyword in your tags and your title, you're telling Etsy like, look, I'm super relevant for this. This, this keyword here is a real good way of describing what my listing is. So when people are searching for that, like show me, I want to be found. I put it in my title and my tags. It's really important to me. It's one of my focuses. Um, and so that's where that focus keywords table comes from. It's showing you the words that your description is telling Etsy or focus keywords for, for that listing. Correct. Which means Correct. non-focus keywords are keywords that are not matched exactly in your title and tags. So focus keywords, keywords that are matched exactly in your title tags, non-focus, they're not matched exactly in your title and tags. Yeah. And you're going to have both. I mean, realistically, you're not going to have every single keyword on your listing be a focus keyword. Uh, it would be kind of crazy to try to match every single keyword from your tags to your title. And you'd probably end up with a title that doesn't read very well because you tried to somehow finagle it so that all of the keywords would match. Now, one of the things that Etsy talks about a lot is long tail keywords. Long tail is something that's it exists outside of Etsy in other SEO realms. Also, Google SEO talks about long tail keywords. Um, and basically all it means is you want to be using a longer, more descriptive keyword instead of a shorter, less descriptive keyword. So jewelry, prime example of a not long tail keyword. That's a short tail keyword, not very descriptive. Someone shows up to Etsy and they say, I want jewelry. Like that's everything in jewelry. <laughs> you know, you haven't narrowed it down for them at all. And so Etsy is going to be like, I don't know what to show these people. Let's show them a mix of things so that they can help us figure out what area they want to actually hone in on here underneath jewelry, because they probably don't just want jewelry. They probably have something in mind that they're specifically interested in. A longer tail keyword, for example, would be like gnome house. All right. So we're talking about a space inside of Etsy. That's very niche. That's something that not a lot of results are going to come back up for. Um, but if you're on Etsy shopping for gnome houses, you know, you, you're going to find exactly what you're looking for and you're going to be ready to make a purchase at that point too. Uh, as opposed to like yard decoration, right? That's way more general. A couple clarifying things there that we get a lot of questions about people thinking long tail necessarily means the keyword needs to be, you know, pretty long. And uh, that's really not exactly the case. Long tail really does mean um, that it's focusing, like Gordon said, more on a niche and has, you know, a higher degree of specificity. So he used the example gnome house, you know, that's the pretty niche, right? Whereas if you were to use anniversary gift for her, right? That's a longer keyword, but it's not long tail because it's not specific at all. It's not a niche at all. If you were to type that search into Etsy, uh, you'd see tons of different kinds of products come back. So there is a differentiation between long tail um, and longer or long keywords. Absolutely. That is a fantastic point. And the, these things are going to change. The, the long tail is based on the market and how big the market is on Etsy. So all of a sudden, if people are start making gnome houses all over the place and there's a flood of gnome houses on Etsy, well, now all of a sudden you're going to have to be more specific than just putting gnome house on your listings. You're, you're going to need to talk about what kind of gnome house it is. You know, is it big? Is it miniature gnome house? You know, maybe it incorporates the gnome's birthstone. I don't know, but it's going to have to be more specific. Uh, and so that's one of the reasons you kind of have to keep on top of keywords. And over time, these things are going to change. Certain markets are going to grow. Certain markets are going to shrink. Um, and you're going to be able to use keywords that you haven't in the past. And you might not be able to use keywords that you were using in the past. Uh, so just another thing to kind of keep an eye on is, is whether or not a keyword has long tail status, because that does change. Right. So just to kind of bring it back to that quick definition. So a long tail focused keyword, we do have a long tail indicator inside of the tools that tells you whether or not the keyword you're looking at is long tail or not. And remember, we talked about a focus keyword being any keyword that's matched exactly in your title and tags. So a long tail focused keyword then which again is part of your grade, is any long tail keyword that's matched exactly in your title and tags. So we're looking for that inside of your grade. So if you don't have any, get some. Definitely. Because if you don't have any, then we, what we're about to talk about next won't even apply, right? You have to have some before you can evaluate your focus keyword engagement. Right. Right? Yeah. You have to have a long tail focus keyword before you can look at the engagement for the long tail focus keyword. You don't Sorry. have to have long tails. Focus you can keyword. actually have, if you have short tails um, or non-long tails, oh, that's right. you would still have focus keyword engagement, but then your grade would be not great if you have zero long tail focus keywords, because we know that Etsy's looking for 
those long tails. So you're right. Yep. I was wrong on that one. I got ahead of myself, but you should have long tail focus keywords. Now your focus keyword engagement, speaking of things that change, right? Just like something could be a long tail and then someday not be a long tail. Your focus keyword could have great engagement today and in a few months not have great engagement because that's just how it works. That's how trends and seasonality happen. We're going to expect that. So focus keyword engagement would be the engagement of your focus keywords, which I won't define that again, but keep an eye on that because these are your main keywords. These are the ones that you're telling Etsy, hey, my listing is really, 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 really about this. So I would say that the engagement of your focus keywords is more important than the engagement of your other, what I'll call ancillary keywords. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so when, when we do have that engagement meter, which shows you the engagement level for each of your keywords, um, again, remembering that those focus keywords are the ones that you're saying, like Richie said, that's what this is really, really, really about. So focus keyword engagement is looking at the amount of people who are actually interacting with those keywords or listings that have those keywords. Um, so of course you want solid levels of engagement because you want to be in front of audiences that are actually interacting and engaging with, uh, with those keywords or with products that have those keywords. I should note too, that we know it's really, really hard to find keywords that have full engagement bars and also have a reasonable amount of competition. So when you're trying to put your high engagement keywords as part of your focus keywords, you don't have to find keywords that have full bars for engagement. You know, it's. We recognize that not all of your keywords are, are going to look like that. And so just try to put the best engagement ones that you can find as focus keywords. They don't have to max out the bars all the time for all your keywords. Right. I talk a lot with folks about balance because I get a lot of discouraged people writing in saying, I can't find, you know, keywords that are green across the board. And again, like Gordon was saying, that's going to be tough. What you want to do is focus on balance. You want to do everything in your power to avoid bottoming out those search and engagement meters. Um, and you also want to do everything in your power to avoid topping out the competition meter. That's like opposite ends of a spectrum, right? So um, on the one end, you know, if you're getting less than tw in uh, 25 instances of search and engagement for a particular keyword market in a given period, that's going to be really tough for you to find the movement that you're looking for when there's so few people, you know, searching and engaging with listings that have that keyword. It's just a tough position to be in based on standard conversion rates. You're probably just not going to see the kind of booming success that you're looking for. On the other end of that spectrum, if you've got awesome search and engagement, but there's 50,000 other shops or listings that are competing for that keyword, you're swimming in a really, really, really crowded pool. And so it's going to be, you know, pretty, again, challenging to get the kind of movement you're looking for in that kind of competitive arena. So really sort of seeking out that balance, trying not to bottom out the search and engagement, try not to top out the competition. It's kind of how we advise you to work with those. Let me jump in real quick to let you know that if you're enjoying this podcast, you should definitely check out our free three-part mini series about Etsy SEO. It's designed to take you from what is Etsy SEO to an example of an efficient Marmalade workflow. Check it out at marmalade.com slash jam 2020. And then uh, long tail tags is going to be the last one. And again, uh, long tail tags, just we talked about long tail and you know the tag section. So it's basically just making sure you have as many long tail tags as possible. Again, so that you're in front of audiences that are closer to making a buying decision um, than, you know, those using really broad keywords and probably more towards the beginning of their search process. Yep. And just like the engagement, you don't have to have all of your ta tags be long tail tags either. A lot of people use a strategy where they'll pick a few long tail keywords and then some more general keywords in hopes that if people are searching a combination of the two, they're going to collect more searches that way. Totally fine. Use that bar that we show, um, in the SEO portion of your grades uh, on your listing to kind of indicate how many you should be shooting for. And as as that bar fills up, you're getting to a point where you've got a good number of long tails in your tags. One more time for old time's sake, I'm just going to remind everybody that your grades are based on those factors that we just talked about. Not your sentiment, not your descriptions, not shipping, not all that stuff. It's those factors that we just talked about. Yep. I mean, I mean those things are still helpful, right? Like if you're trying to work on your listings and improve your listings, those are very helpful things to do. Marmalade's focused on SEO, and so that's where our grades are, are really geared towards. The number of photos that you have on your listing or the quality of your photos, very important, but it, it's not used on Etsy's website to determine 
you know, where you're going to place when somebody searches a keyword that you have on your listing. That kind of segues into that point that you could have a poorly graded listing that can actually do well. You can have a, a listing that's graded really well that's not selling so well. So let's look at, like, just take the example of a poorly graded listing um, that's selling well. Uh, Gordon, why might that be? It could be that, you know, you're killing it for the keywords that you have on your listing and you could be doing even better. There could be better keywords that you're, you, you could be putting on your listing and that listing could even perform better than it is right now. It could be that, you know, your photos are absolutely outstanding and you might not show up in search very much, but when you do, you crush it and people are clicking on your listing all the time to go check it out and make the purchase. It could be any number of things really. And on the flip side of that, you could have an A listing and it's not doing well. And uh, probably one of the primary reasons that we see for that. So again, remember that those SEO factors look at how you've applied keywords. We can't tell you whether that keyword is the right keyword for you in your shop. So let's say that you're selling a gnome house and you know it's a house specifically built and engineered for those gnomes, right? But let's say you use the keyword birdhouse and you apply it perfectly and everything, but people who are looking for birdhouses don't expect to see gnome houses. You might have an A grade on that listing, but you're not gonna sell it because you're using the wrong keywords, you're targeting the wrong audience. So uh, you can totally have an A grade and then not be doing very well with sales because you're not targeting the right audiences for your product. And that's a fantastic point. I think that's, that's an easy thing for people to fall into when they're working on their listings and they're focused purely on the grade instead of like their listing as a whole or their shop as a whole. Uh, it's easy to fall into that trap of like, I got to find a better keyword, got to find a better keyword. And then I find like, oh, this keyword's killer. Does it really apply? But man, the numbers look good, right? Like, I feel like I should throw it on there. And it's easy to fall into that trap. And maybe you'll have success with some of them. But chances are, if you're if you're feeling like that keyword is something that your audience isn't really looking for, or it doesn't, it's not a great match for really what you're trying to sell. It's probably not. You're probably not going to get a lot of traction with that. Obviously, you're going to want to go check your stats to know for sure. How well you're doing for certain keywords but you know i would caution you to avoid picking a keyword to put on your listing purely based on the numbers that are coming back for that keyword you want to make sure it's a good description of your listing first and foremost totally another thing i think is important to talk about is if something is working let it keep working for you don't change what's already working for you no matter what the grade is one of the worst emails that i get sometimes that i have to respond to is i went in and I changed everything because I had a B grade and it was my best seller, but I really wanted that A. Do not change what's already working for you, no matter what the grade says. Always start with the group of your lowest performing listings and work out from there. Yeah, anything to add there? 100% agreed. 100% agreed as well. If if something is working, that means there, I mean, why why touch it? If everything is working, don't touch it. It'll change, right? Wait until something isn't, but go and fix exactly like what you just said. Find your lowest performers and work outwards from there. Don't look at the one that's the best and then say, you know, okay, I'm going to try to fix this one and get all the ground there. Your biggest gains are going to come from your worst performers, probably. Because uh, you know, we've also said, you know, go ahead and like focus on what's working and try to do more of that. But we're not saying go back and change what's working right use that as a blueprint say look these ones aren't working these are the ones i need to work on these ones are working but don't change those try to learn from those i think what can be confusing there for folks is that they're if, you know if the grade isn't good again they're assuming that that grade is basically the be all end all like all i need is an a and then everything's going to be good from there um and i think it's important to make the point that that that's not the case grades are important but they aren't the whole picture. They're just one tool that we're giving you uh, out of a lot of different tools that we offer you with the primary goal of trying to help you get everything headed in the right direction. Yes, it's helpful when you're working on listings that aren't performing well and move that grade up the scale. But again, if something's already working for you, allow it to keep working. Um, grades are just, just keep in mind, they are one piece of the puzzle. Uh, they are not the the total picture for listing health. Is that fair to say? Yeah, it's definitely more than fair to say. I mean, we don't, the, the grade doesn't know if what you're selling is something people are actually going to buy, right? It's what you're selling, right? We know that those keywords are good keywords, but as you pointed out earlier, we don't know if that's a good fit for what 
you're selling. We don't know the quality of what you're selling. We don't know the price point of what you're selling. Those are all other pieces to the puzzle of what it takes to sell something. Right. So anything that you guys want to pop in there about what you feel is important besides your grade? I mean, I know we've talked about some other things, but so your grades and then what are the other kind of key things that come to mind? I mean, the first one that comes to my mind is photos. That's everyone knows that's huge on Etsy. You could have the best grade in the world and your grades could even be reflective of how much you're showing up in search. But if you don't have good photos, you're not going to get clicks. And if you're not getting clicks, you're not getting sales. And so that that's just kind of one of those things like you, you need to invest time in your keywords and you need to invest time in your photos. Those are the two biggies. Yeah. So this is kind of how I explain things to folks. You know, I, I kind of say, think about it this way. You know, let's say that you are in school and all you care about are your grades, right? Um, you miss all the different school outings. You don't ever go to the dances. You don't join any of those extracurricular clubs. You're going to have you know, an awesome GPA, right? Your grades are going to be awesome, but you're probably going to miss connecting with people. You know, you're, you're probably not going to connect with very many people. And so how much are those grades going to do for you if you haven't, you know, taken the time to build relationships, make connections? You know, chances are for most of us, the grades aren't going to be the bottom line for future success, right? But if you put your grades in combination with building relationships, with focusing on people, you know, let's say, let's kind of go back and rewind and say that you are in school again, uh, but this time you care about grades and you're also like balancing that out with outings and extracurriculars and things like that. Your grades might not be 100% perfect, but you've also taken the time to connect with people and build relationships. And based on that, your chances of success are likely a lot higher uh, because you've created a network you know, alongside having a strong work ethic and focusing on those grades. So what I say a lot, what I explain is that your sales factors, they are your chance to build relationships in the e-commerce setting, right? Your photos, your descriptions, your branding, that space that you create, that is your opportunity, right? That's kind of equivalent to those dances and outings and extracurricular activities. And they're just as important as those grades are within Marmalade because we're wanting you to balance those things. We're wanting to give you every opportunity uh, to be successful in this space. And it's a balance between those things that's, that we believe is really going to help get you there most efficiently. Yeah, I totally agree, Lisa, that grades aren't everything. I mean, C, the C grade, by the way, is average, right? That's the average scaled to what we're seeing for Etsy listings. So if you have a C grade, great. Look, your, your listing is average, but of course you want to be above average. Uh, you don't want to be below average. That's you know why you care enough to jump on Marmalade in the first place is to improve your shop. Uh, but if you get a B, you're above average. If you get an A, you're above that even, right? Like you're getting into uh, more and more rarefied air as you go up that, right? So you know, if, if you're a D, okay, then perhaps you want to go and, you know, adjust that. Uh, a C, you know, it depends on what else is going on in your shop, right? So all my listings are a C for SEO. Okay, you're average. I, that's, it's not fantastic, but it's also not the worst thing to happen. Like, where are your photos and your descriptions and the other things going on in your shop? Are they all Fs and on fire right now? Because if that's the case, that might be more important than bringing your, your B to an A or even your C to a B. Um, if those things are all failing, because like you pointed out, you could have an A grade SEO wise, but if everything else is falling apart, it's not going to help you any. So it really is a balancing act. You don't want things in your shop at the different extremes, A's, F's, A's, F's, right? Like it needs to work together. I'd rather have everything at a C be nice and average and have average success than having a bunch of those other key things just not in check and not doing well. Take an honest look at your Etsy shop and uh and grade it yourself like we we show you the seo grade right but grade yourself on the other ones i think it's not always easy for folks to take an honest look at their shop it does take some grit to look at something that you've created and say oh maybe there's room for improvement here maybe my photography really isn't the best um i think and i might be wrong and i might get some flack for this but it might be particularly difficult for artists from time to time to look at what they've created and really, I don't know, sort of tear it up a little and oh, take, to take it to the next level. It seems to be almost like personal for the creative. And, that, and I understand that. But it is so important because Etsy is not only a creative space, it's also 100% a business. And businesses mm -hmm. 
are, you know, driven on analytics and things of that nature. And yes, the creative component is huge, but in order to sort of capitalize toward a system that is very logical and very analytical and things of that nature, you really do have to be willing to step back, step outside of the creative space a little bit and say, okay, there's definitely room for improvement here for me to take things to the next level. So that honest look at your shop, it's so important. And it's important to not be too hard on yourself, but to open yourself up to some honest criticism and make improvements based on that collective criticism. Yeah, just accept that we can all do things better. It's just a matter of how much better can it get? And is it worth it? Right. One other thing that I wanted to mention is that your grades are going to change over time, even if you're not making changes to your listing. You know, we talked about how engagement is a, is a component of your grade. Uh, and as your keywords that you're using, that engagement is going to change month to month. And so if you go into Marmalade one day and all of a sudden an A listing is now a B listing or a C listing is, is now an A listing, without you making any changes, that's completely normal. That's because the markets are changing. That's because the landscape inside of Etsy is changing. And so the way that your listings are set up to attack that is going to change, uh, you know, over time. Yes, 100% cheers, clink glasses to that. I get that a lot. People writing in and saying, I didn't do anything. Why did it change? Because these right. markets change over time. It is the right. nature of the business that you're, you know, trying to create is that it, it's going to change over time. And that's why we provide maintenance tools for you. That's why we're doing everything in our power to provide you up to date information every single time you log into Marmalade because we want you to know what's going on in those markets so that you can be in front of those changes ahead of that curve. So yeah, maintenance, huge piece of the puzzle. Logging in regularly, you know, every two to four weeks to just make sure that your market hasn't changed. And if it has, to adjust accordingly, very important. So stay on top of that maintenance schedule.